Um, these paintings were made um, during the winter time when I was in grad school at Indiana University in Bloomington. And everything was gray and cold, and you know there wasn't even the smallest little piece of, of grass. And so every day I would go to the studio, and there'd be ice and snow, and it's just a whole new world for me living in the north. And in the studio, I started making these large paintings like the one you see here. Um, that were really colorful and vibrant, I think, to combat all that gray. And recently, I've really been processing this as the show has been up and been thinking about it a whole lot. And really, um, I was very aware of what it might be like in Mississippi in the warm of January, or the relative warmth of January. Um, and I guess I was a little bit envious, or I missed home, um, and I thought of my friends playing frisbee and having picnics, even on warm days in January. And so I wanted these paintings to, at the time, sort of cheer me up and liven up things in the studio, and the body of work really came out of that. Um, but more recently, I've thought about just the role that these paintings might play um, in the lives of people in Mississippi. Um, I think the paintings could make people here sort of hyper aware of what they enjoy every single day and might not be aware of. So it's a lot of fun for me to see people come in and go, wow, you know, there's a lot of yellow, a lot of pink, a lot of, of color in, in the kind of explosion of the mark. And it's exciting for me to see how people respond to that. And every single day, you know, as I was walking the gallery today, here it is spring, time, sunny, everything's growing, the, the daylilies are just about to bloom. Um, but I want people to be conscious of that and appreciate it every single day, because that's what Mississippi is to me. It's this undergrowth and growing and warmth, and life is sort of slow-paced enough to where you can enjoy that. And it's a pleasure for me to live here, and I really think these paintings are about celebrating Mississippi. It took me going away to maybe realize that and coming back to enjoy it again. This painting is called Eating Eden, and so it's sort of a biblical reference here. I work at um, a Baptist University, and so I'm thinking about that all the time. And the painting started out as this very celebrative, colorful um, kind of experience. You know, you'll, you'll notice all sort of the underlayers here are vibrant and sort of loud and celebrative. And I kept thinking, wow, the painting's almost finished, the painting's almost finished. But it needed something. And so I started adding in sort of this darker area on top and this mark here and, and this little thing that kind of floats up in maybe a different way. Um, and I wanted this more optimistic thing to feel like it's being pushed or being, um, I don't know, sort of kicked or being taken over by this darker area, this richer area. And I'm really interested in, in dark, sort of rich, subtle colors, um, but I sort of put that on hold to make these brighter, sort of more celebrated paintings for a while. And it's fun to me when I notice these things coming up, this kind of duality. And really these paintings were made under a kind of tension, the tension of grad school, the tension of working um, as an instructor for my first two years. Um, so they come from a place where it's not just optimistic and celebrated, but it's optimistic and celebrated in relationship to something else. So it's this kind of opposing forces all the time. I think that's sort of how I feel in general about life. Um, we have to kind of fight to celebrate our life. We have to try to make a point to enjoy friends and family, to love people every day of our lives. And sometimes things come up and it's not easy. Um, and I hope that's reflected in the paintings. Um, this painting is called Pink Painting. Um, I made really in response to my mother's garden. The back of our house is like 50 feet of plate glass. And so the experience of living with my family is one where you're living outside and inside kind of at the same time. And it really bothered me. When I first started making these paintings, I was living in this little shoebox apartment with tiny windows. And light was the last thing they had in mind, I think, when they built the place. And so this painting was about trying to remember the, sort of the warmth of my family. And part of that was that experience of always looking out through those windows and walking through the living room and the dining room um, and experiencing that light all the time. And I wanted this painting to feel like there's maybe a human being, sort of in a metaphorical way, underneath all this growth. So the pink is not just about floral kind of reference, it's also about sort of skin and what pink can be in general. So it might get warmer, cooler, peacher, peachier, purpler. And I was really excited just about what the color pink can be. I mean, pink is normally a kind of color that we associate with women. And I lived in Japan, I remember all these beautiful ladies in pink and purple and all these very feminine colors. And at the time, you know, I just 
it was in my jeans and t-shirt and wasn't necessarily interested in all that. And so this painting is trying to kind of redefine, I don't know, the role of pink and thinking about the experience of being with my mother and what she does for our family in a subtle way with daylilies and you know, elephant ears and banana tree plants and all kinds of things right outside. And I think this is one of the most successful paintings in the show. And I gave it to her um, sort of to say thank you for paying for supplies and things like that. This painting is funny. It started out as this kind of attempt to push a color palette. So I wanted it to reference things like sci-fi type colors. So like what you think about when you um, remember, say, old Star Trek episodes, you know, with Captain Kirk and this sort of thing, this kind of crazy green or these strange um, kind of reddish copper colors and how those kind of fight together. And I didn't want the painting to just feel sort of happy and optimistic. I wanted it to push that palette to be a little bit offbeat. And it hung in my house for a really long time. And my dad said, aha, I finally understand what your paintings are about. And I thought, wow, and what is he going to say, you know, a professor of 40 years. And he said to me, um, your paintings are like salads. You get a little bit of onions, a little bit of tomatoes, a little bit of lettuce. You throw it all together and you see what happens. And I thought that was an interesting comment because in each of the paintings, I'm trying to create systems of organization, not unlike what Paul Clay is talking about in The Thinking Eye when he takes different kinds of marks and assigns them adjectives. So this is an angry line, this is a chaotic line, this is a smooth, you know, laid back line. And Hiram Williams does this in his book, um, Notes for a Young Painter. And more and more, um, what I find I'm doing in the studio is trying to create systems of organization. And I'll talk about that maybe a little bit more as we go through the paintings. But maybe this has a different feel or different rhythm or different weight than, say, this kind of vertical thing that's happening here, or these things flying above almost like flags. And I think about all these references. I don't necessarily expect for the viewer to get that. And I'm a little bit, um, I worry, I guess, about putting too much verbal stuff onto a viewer. I want the paintings to speak for themselves and for people to respond to the visual work on the wall for what it is without sort of my narration. Um, on top of that, but I'm always thinking about this, and I think it's important to mention that just to understand how an artist thinks, or how we make up ways to sort of entertain ourselves, get energy, you know, sort of stored up, so that way when you go to the canvas, the mark is really on and really alive, and that's really important to me. And so I say that mainly just to share that, that I'm constantly trying to find new ways of organizing things, making brackets. This painting is called Bells and Bows. Um, so Southern Bells, I wanted to kind of reference these women that I work with who are, I don't know, from a different generation than I am. They're very high powered, sort of energetic, um, aggressive women who grew up during the 40s and 50s who, um, I don't know, sort of fought their way through feminism and fought their way to have a career yet maintained sort of presence of being a lady or a polite, interesting woman, and um, there are many people like that here that I work with on campus, and I've also just encountered them for a long time, so bells and bells, that's the bells part, and then the bells part, I wanted the painting to feel like just a huge bow of flowers that might be about to be shaken up, or is sort of shaken up, or just something about the gravity of the bow, I didn't want it to just feel like it was hanging, I wanted it to feel like it was sort of in your face, confrontational, and I really intentionally tried to use kind of sweet colors that might be palatable that someone who doesn't normally like abstract painting might respond to, specifically maybe that demographic of the Southern Bell. Um, and then underneath that, I wanted to have something a little bit more um, pessimistic or almost as if the bow was sort of falling apart or tearing apart. And that seems to happen over and over in the work. The things kind of almost like continents, they pull apart and they're going to collide back together. It seems to be just something I don't know that I've noticed over and over again. Um, so, this painting I think is sort of um, me trying to talk about what it means to be a female painter in the South and work with all kinds of interesting ladies and make something for them, really, that they might appreciate that has something a little bit more difficult underneath. And, and I really got excited about this mark. A lot of it was processed too on this painting. Just a lot of fun to make this one. So. How long do you spend on something like that? Oh, it depends. Some of them go more quickly. The yellow painting that's right over here was relatively quickly. Um, it was like the idea just came. The blue painting back in this corner, um, I really just tried to just put paint down and start pressing it and see what would happen. 
This one, I think, came fairly quickly. I had this idea about this kind of interesting oriental blue-green color. Um, so blue right before it gets to be really green, but a, a real coolish kind of feeling thing. Um, and I kind of was rediscovering blue all the time, trying to make blue do something more interesting. Because I love yellow and I love some hot, warm colors, but blue is something I like to play with a lot. How long? Um, I think I worked on it for about six months, certainly not every day, but just would pick it back up at least once a week. And then I took some time off. And the painting was a lot more sort of optimistic. Like this color came all the way over at one point. You might could, I don't know, see it underneath there. Um, and then I started putting in this other stuff. I don't know. And I'm always kind of fighting back and forth. Do I want to make a truly sort of abstract painting that's just shapes and colors and kind of ideas that I'm playing with in a more formal way? Or do I want to reference things? And I can never quite make up my mind. And the line between those two is a fun place for me to be.